Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. 2022 is halfway done and yet we still have a lot of monster taming content coming this year. The first half included some really big releases for me in particular, including Coromon's full access, the Nexomon Extinction Abyssal's update, Pokemon Legends, and more. But the second half is also not to be slept on either with tons of interesting content coming both with lots of info and others with less but are still slated for this year. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my top 10 anticipated releases for the second half of 2022. Do note that the order of these is based on my opinion and not which games are objectively better than one another. None of the games that are not on this list or the lower rated titles are anything that I'd consider bad or uninteresting. I have my reasons for ordering these in the way that I did and I will explain my thoughts as we go, but just know that I'm excited for pretty much every release this year. Anyways, with all that being said, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. Number 10, Monster Crown DLC. So right off the bat, the reason this isn't higher on my list is just because we don't know a whole lot about it. And while it's presumably coming this year, based on what I've seen in the Discord, there is no official date confirmation. Monster Crown is a very interesting take on the monster taming formula, adding crossbreeds, a synergy system, mid battle transformation, some really cool and sinister monster designs and lore and more. Presumably this DLC will be just more of that. I'm assuming it'll include new monsters, a new area, maybe some some new mechanics, and basically much like what we saw with the Nexomon Extinction Abyssals update. I will keep you guys in the loop for any updates regarding this, so definitely stay tuned. Number 9, Soul Hackers 2. Releasing in August, Soul Hackers 2 is going to be a sequel to the original Soul Hackers game released way back in the 90s. Now, while I haven't played that title specifically, and I have seen some dissent regarding the game going in a different direction than the original, it is part of the Shin Megami Tensei family, and while I personally don't think that this game is as visually appealing as SMT5, I definitely am looking forward to playing another SMT-like experience. SMT5 was my first full playthrough of a Shin Megami Tensei game, and I'm definitely looking forward to playing some more. Number 8, Evo Creo 2. Now the interesting thing about Evo Creo 2 is that while the game is planned for a 2022 release, it was delayed several times and to this day we don't have any gameplay. What you're seeing on screen now is just the trailer for Evo Creo 1 and while I haven't played the first game just yet, I have seen some gameplay online and I'm definitely looking forward to playing the second as well as going back to play the first. My plan for that is to maybe play the first one in sort of a let's play format around the time we get a release date for the second and sort of just lead up to it. But again, we don't have a lot of information. This would be much higher on my list if we had some level of gameplay footage and if the game was also coming to Steam and consoles. But the first game is mobile only, which presumably will be the same as the second. So I'll either have to get like blue stacks or hook up my phone to the computer or whatever so I can do some let's plays for you guys. But the first one looks pretty good. So I'm assuming the second one will be as well. It seems to be a game very much in the same vein as something like Coromon or Nexomon, so right up my alley. Number 7, Sky Climbers Early Access. Toward the end of the year, we have Sky Climbers Early Access to look forward to. Unfortunately, my computer is a bit outdated, so I had trouble running the game in its alpha state, hence why I haven't posted any gameplay of the alpha on my channel just yet. My buddy Barry did though, so you should totally check out his channel and subscribe to him. But if all goes well financially over the next few months, I do hope to be able to upgrade my rig and finally give the game a go. The early access is said to be the most significant release for the game outside of consoles, I guess, and will bring forth a plethora of new sentients and characters, as well as further touch-ups and modes to the game. If you want to learn more about Sky Climbers, you can check out these two videos linked below, where I go over some of the different aspects of the game. Number six, Digimon Survive. Okay, so if this was a Digimon story title, it'd definitely be top three for me, but alas, I'm still excited, despite me not being someone who's actually really played any tactical RPGs. In terms of my history with Digimon, I was a fan of the early seasons of Digimon as a kid, but never really got into the games and much of the other aspects of the franchise, so this game is sort of gonna be a launching point for me to return to the fandom. The game is coming in July, and I look forward to completely fumbling around with you guys, as I'm both not knowledgeable of anything Digimon related past the second season, and I'm not really knowledgeable with tactical RPGs. It's going to be fun. 
Number five, Temtem Full Access. So yes, Temtem has been confirmed to be getting its full access launch on September 6th of this year, and I'm pretty damn excited for it. Now that said, I have played through the entire game already other than post-game content that will be coming with 1.0 release, which is why I decided not to put it any higher on this list. But the developers have stated some really interesting features that are coming to the game, including a battle frontier with a roguelite mode that I think is awesome, increased Luma odds, a Temtem showdown that'll make PvP super accessible, literally you just simulate the battles right there you don't have to grind or anything and a ton of other stuff that they're adding to the game to make it more friendly for all players i'm definitely going to be doing a clean playthrough on nintendo switch so if you're a fan of my let's play content stay tuned for that Number four, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Yes, that's right. I'm actually excited for a Pokemon game, which is the first time in a while. I'm not saying that Scarlet and Violet is going to be this amazing game that completely sweeps the genre off its feet, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the first true open world Pokemon game has to offer. I really enjoyed Pokemon Legends in spite of its more simplistic battle system. So taking a lot from that game and adding to a core title is definitely something intriguing to me. It was really hard for me to put this above Temtem's full launch on the list, but my main justification for that is that I've already played through Temtem, so playing through it again, while it's probably going to be a lot of fun, this is a new experience. So you can kind of consider number five and four sort of interchangeable for me. Number three, Monster Sanctuary Forgotten World DLC. Okay, so this is technically part of the first year by one day with June 30th being the official launch, but I don't care. I'm really looking forward to diving back into the world of Monster Sanctuary, especially after playing the beta with the developers on stream a while back. The new update is actually already out on Nintendo Switch, which was an accidental update. And as of the time you guys are watching this video, there's a good chance that I'm grinding through the game on my Switch to get to the DLC point so that I'm ready on the 30th for guides and breakdowns for you guys. The update itself will include new monsters, redesigns to previous ones, a new area to explore, new abilities, and more, so definitely something to look forward to, especially with how soon it's coming. Number two, Pal World. Pal World is a title that we know very little about, but have received quite a few gameplay trailers for at this point. It doesn't have a release date either, but the reason I'm anticipating this game so heavily is because of the sheer oddity behind its concept. The idea of a game where you can tame and catch monsters whilst also shooting and forcing them into what essentially is slave labor is almost comedic in its execution, but also kind of sheds a light on what a monster taming world would actually be like if these types of creatures existed within it. I think that Pal World will really turn the genre on its head and create an interesting dialogue. I don't know whether or not this game will end up being good, but I do know that it'll be a good time and may open the door to more darker monster taming titles from other developers. Number one, Coromon post-launch update. Yes, that's right. I'm most excited for Coromon's post-launch updates because it means the post-game is coming, and for me, it's an excellent excuse to dive back into the game. Coromon really did make a big splash for the genre upon its release, and I think that this update will push it even further. It's going to make PvP less RNG-heavy, add a ton of PvE content to the post-game, and even make changes to the end game. So it's going to be actually a lot of fun to replay the game and see how the end has changed because the developers have stated that they're not happy with the final boss battle and how it goes, so we're going to see some crazy updates there. I'm also excited for the game to make its way to Switch and mobile so that fans of these platforms can finally get a chance to experience this awesome game. But yeah guys, a ton of awesome stuff still to come this year and I'm looking forward to all of it. What is your most anticipated releases or updates and why? Definitely feel free to let me know in the comment section down below and if you do want to stay up to date on any of the games mentioned, definitely subscribe to my channel because I put out new monster taming videos every single day. You can also check out my Twitter, my Discord, my Patreon, all links below. Speaking of Patreon, special thanks to our patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Steel Case, Dark Persona, and Drill Ghost. You guys all don't realize how much you help my channel out and and allow for me to make as much content as I do. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace.